Hello friends, this is Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan from Nandadip Eye Hospital and PG Teaching Institute, Sangli, Maharashtra, India. And this is another interesting video of high myopia, grade 4 cataract and I am going to implant minus 10 adapter IOL. So this is a 45 year old high myop having myopic maculopathy and power of minus 10. So I am going to do this under sub tenon anesthesia. So this is the procedure. I give sub conjunctal anesthesia, wait for 30 seconds and then followed by posterior sub tenon 1.5 cc xylocaine. Again wait for a couple of minutes and patient is absolutely comfortable. Now it gives the illusion that there is a subluxation of this lens but uh, it is just because the nucleus clause is very dense. Uh, compared to the cortex and it gives us the illusion that it might be a subluxation. So in this case I have decided to give posterior subtenal anesthesia because the patient is young, high myope and it's a hard cat tract and uh, the fluctuations in the anterior chamber are going to be uncomfortable for this patient. The sclera being more elastic in these patients there will be some fluctuation. Now the CCC appears small but when I measured it, it was around 5.9 mm and if adjusted for the corneal magnification, it was around 5.3 mm. So whenever the pupil is well dilated, you get this illusion that uh, CCC might be small. But this is adequate CCC for this cataract and of course if required, we can enlarge it on the go. So first I wanted to do hydro dissection, but you can see the hydro delineation happened first and then followed by cortex cleaving hydro dissection. There goes the LIDRS as you see very commonly in high myopes and young patients with elastic sclera the AC immediately becomes deep as the infusion starts. So the first part I am going to do half trench so I am going to use 100% linear ozil I am going to use constellation FACO machine here and deep half trench is very essential because it eases the next steps. So the next step will be chopping. I am going to use combination of longitudinal and torsional FACO and look how easily it could be done. So this is a grade 4 cataract but uh, luckily the posterior plate is not that sticky and breaks very easily. So I could divide this uh, nucleus into multiple pieces there trying to divide till the posterior plate so I can take out the pieces one by one after the chopping is over can notice few fluctuations in the anterior chamber so I am reducing the vacuum a bit over a period of time so f when I started it was 380 and now I am reducing it to 330 and then even 280 so it is very important to look at what is happening in the anterior chamber so whenever you notice see these kind of fluctuation you should reduce the vacuum and while using peristaltic you can also reduce flow rate a bit so we are basically preparing for the last piece. You can watch my video on last piece strategy. So you judge these fluctuations right at the beginning because initially the piece is well protected by the nucleus. But as you go on emulsifying these pieces, the posterior capsule is going to get exposed and you need to have good stable chamber. So this is my conventional OVD pit stop. That's what I call. So use again hyalucoat combination of chondritin and hyalurate and followed by methyl cellulose in the bag so that the nucleus pieces go down, bag is inflated again. If there is any fluid accumulation behind posterior capsule, it just dissipates and we are ready for the next round of nucleus emulsification. And uh, there is LIDRS, you can see the deepening of chamber. So I'm going to use it to my advantage as you have deep chamber. So away from the endothelium I can emulsify the remaining pieces here again you can see after reducing the vacuum the fluctuations have reduced quite a bit and that's the goal achieved though there will be some fluctuation because the sclera is still elastic as I noted that the followability is lost here you can see those pieces are not coming so I take the PECO probe out buzz it a little bit outside so the block is removed and again I go ahead with emulsification. This happens commonly with very hard grade of cataracts with ozil as the pieces may get blocked. Now 
I am going to do cortex aspiration, well dilated pupil. So always you can remove the cortex very easily whenever you can visualize it very nicely. Again the LIDRS helps here because of deepening of the chamber and dilatation of the pupil. Now the LIDRS is uncomfortable if we are doing it on topical anesthesia. I avoid over enthusiastic polishing of uh, these capsules because we need some fibrosis of the capsule for the long term stability of hyal back complex and uh, there is no proven advantage that it reduces PCO which is going to happen over a period of time. So this is a minus 10 diopter IOL. This is a negative powered IOL so you have a thick edge. You place it in the groove. This is a sensor 3 piece and then you flick the trailing haptic on the left side of the cartridge after you put it in the injector like this. So it avoids uh, the plunger damaging the trailing haptic there. It goes through 2.8 mm incision. It is important to provide the counter traction by the Sinsky through the side incision. This avoids the injector coming out of the incision. I use CTR in high myopes if I am not going to use 3 piece IOL. So there it goes. The leading haptic is already in the bag and I am going to dial the trailing haptic also in the bag. You can just uh, see the thick edge of the IOL which is seen in negative powered IOLs and followed by visco wash. LIDRS is most prominent after IL is in the bag so you should remember this when you are doing on topical anesthesia it might be a bit discomfortable for the patient so you can flick the iris up to break it after you place the IOL. I use 1% hyalurate uh, so the OVD wash is pretty quick as it is a cohesive viscoelastic it comes out in bulk and you get a nice clean bag after the OVD wash. If you can wash out the OVD completely from the anterior chamber, the patient has very good post-operative course. There goes the hydration of the incision. There will be always deepening of the anterior chamber in high myopes when you hydrate the incision. But for next couple of hours, the anterior chamber will get to normal. Now it's just time to just sit back and watch at the beauty the creator has created and be grateful for thousands of those who helped us to reach this kind of sophisticated procedure over a period of years which gives vision to millions of people around the world. Thank you so much for watching the video. For more videos do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also visit our Facebook page and our website fakotraining.org.in. Thank you.